Hello, my name is Daniel Inga. I'll be covering chapter 24, nutrition, metabolism, and energy balance. The first section I'll go over is nutrition. A nutrient is a substance in food the body uses to promote normal growth, maintenance, and repair. Nutrients are broken down into several categories, the first being carbohydrates. Some sources of carbohydrates are plants, sugars, and polysaccharide starch found in grains and vegetables. The body uses the glucose found in carbohydrates to make ATP, which is energy for the body. Dietary requirements, 45% to 65% of total calorie intake is recommended to maintain health with an emphasis on taking in more complex carbohydrates, which are whole grains, vegetables, versus simple carbohydrates, which are monosaccharide and disaccharide sugars. The next nutrient we're going to look at is proteins. Sources of protein include eggs, milk, fish, meat, beans and peas, nuts, and cereals. There are several functions of protein in the body, one of them being caloric intake, another nitrogen balance, anabolic hormones, and the all or none rule. The all or none rule is all amino acids need to make a particular protein must be present in a cell at the same time and in sufficient amounts. If one is missing, the protein cannot be made because essential amino acids cannot be stored. Those not used immediately to build proteins are oxidized for energy or converted to carbohydrates or fats. The recommended di dietary requirements are 12% to 20% of total caloric intake. This amount varies depending on a person's age, size, metabolic rate, and the need to build new protein. A complete protein contains all 20 amino acids. Some examples are eggs, milk products, meat, soybeans. An incomplete protein contains less than 20 amino acids. Examples of this are beans, nuts and seeds, grains, cereals, and vegetables. The next nutrient we're going to look at are lipids. Sources of lipids are saturated fats in animal products and a few tropical plant products, such as coconut and oil and trans fats such as margarine and solid shortenings, and unsaturated fats which are present in seeds, nuts, olive oils, and most vegetable oils. Some functions of lipids provide protective cushioning around the organs, insulation, stored energy, help the body absorb fat-soluble vitamins. The most abundant dietary lipids are triglycerides. Triglycerides are the major energy fuel of skeletal muscles and hepatocytes. Dietary requirements of lipids. Fats should represent 30% or less of total caloric intake. Saturated fats should be limited to 10% of total fat intake. The daily cholesterol intake should be no more than 300 milligrams, which is about one and a half egg yolk. Most vitamins function as coenzymes, which act with an enzyme to accomplish a particular chemical task. For example, the B vitamin acts as a coenzyme when glucose is oxidized for energy. Vitamins are either water-soluble or fat-soluble. Fat-soluble vitamins, such as vitamins A, D, E, and K, bind to ingested lipids and are absorbed along with their digestion products. Water-soluble vitamins, the B complex vitamins and vitamin C, are absorbed along with water in the GI tract. In order for B12 to be absorbed, it must first bind to intrinsic factor, which is a stomach secretion. The body requires moderate amounts of seven minerals, which are calcium, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, sodium, chlorine, and magnesium. It also requires trace amounts of iron, iodine, magnesium, zinc, cobalt, fluorine, selenine, and chromium. Minerals are not used for fuel, but they work with other nutrients to ensure a smoothly functioning body. An example of this would be calcium, phosphorus, and magnesium salts harden the teeth and strengthen the skeleton. The next section I will cover is metabolism. Metabolism processes. Metabolism, or teardown, is all processes that break down complex structures to simpler ones. Anabolism, or buildup, is all reactions that build larger molecules or structures from smaller ones. Oxidation reduction reactions are oxidized substances which lose energy and reduced substances gain energy. ATP synthesis. Substrate level phosphorylation occurs when high energy phosphate groups are transferred directly from phosphorylated substances to ADP. Oxidative phosphorylation. 
produced ATP through the electronic transport chain. Carbohydrate metabolism, oxidation of glucose, glycolysis, which is an anaerobic reversible reaction, starts with sugar activation, which uses two ATPs. Then you cleave the sugar into two to three carbon pieces. Oxidize the carbon pieces, reduce the coenzymes NAD to NADH plus hydrogen, and form two pyruvic acids and four ATP, adding two ATPs. In the absence of O2, pyruvic acid forms into lactic acid. When O2 becomes available, lactic acid is turned into pyruvic acid and enters the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle is also known as a citrus acid cycle. It starts with decarboxylation of pyruvic acids, which release CO2. Oxidation removing hydrogen atoms, which are picked up by NAD. Acetic acid is combined with coenzyme A to produce acetyl COA and is now ready for Krebs cycle. In the Krebs cycle, pyruvic acid turns into three CO2s plus one ATP and five reduced coenzymes. There are two pyruvic acids produced from each glucose molecule. The reduced coenzymes carry their high energy electrons to the electron transport chain. Electron transport chain occurs in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Electron transport chain components are proteins bound to metal atoms such as flavins and cytochromes known as cofactors. Respiratory enzyme complexes pass electrons along to lower and lower energy levels until finally giving to oxygen. This forms H2O. Electronic energy carried by electrons is used to transport proteins into the inner membrane space which creates an electrochemical proton gradient that stores potential energy used to make ATP later. ATP synapsis uses the energy from the flow of electrons to add high energy phosphate to ADP which forms ATP. For each pyruvic acid in the electron transport chain, 10 to 11 ATPs are formed. The final product from one glucose molecule in the presence of O2 is 36 to 38 ATPs, 6 H2Os, and 6 CO2s. 40% of energy in glucose is utilized to form ATP. The rest is lost as heat. Glycogenesis, production of glycogen through the binding of glucose molecules occur when high ATP levels begin to turn off. Glycogenesis, the breakdown of glycogen when blood glucose levels drop. Glucogenesis, the process of forming new glucose from non-carbohydrate molecules occurs when dietary sources and glucose reserves have been used up and blood glucose levels start to drop. Next I'll go over lipid metabolism. Oxidation of glycerol and fatty acids. Beta oxidation, the initial phase of fatty acid oxidation which occurs in the mitochondria. Lipogenesis is the production of fat which occurs when cellular ATP and glucose levels are high. Lipolysis is the breakdown of fats. Ketogenesis is the liver converts acetylcholine molecules to ketone bodies or ketones which are then released into the blood. Synthesis of structural material. Membranes. All body cells use phospholipids and cholesterol to build membranes. Phospholipids are an important component to myelin sheets. Synthesi synthesized lipoprotein to transport cholesterols, fats, and other substances in the blood. Thromboplastin, plasma protein that helps with blood clotting. And cholesterol is used to synthesize bile salts, steroid hormones, and acetylcholine. Next is protein metabolism. Oxidation of amino acids. Transemination, a ketoglutaric acid converts to glutamic acid, which is also reversible. Oxidative demination amino group is removed as ammonia and is added with CO2 through the urea cycle due to ammonia being so toxic. Keto acid modification. Keto acids are altered as necessary to produce metabolites that can enter Krebs cycle. In protein synthesis, amino acids are the most important anabolic nutrient. Catabolic anabolic steady state. The body draws on its nutrient pools the current stocks of amino acids, carbohydrates, and fats to meet its varying needs. The amino acid pool is the body's total supply of free amino acids. Carboha carbohydrate fat pools versus amino acid pools. Fats and carbohydrates are oxidized directly to produce cellular energy, whereas amino acids can be used to supply energy. 
and excess carbohydrates and fats can be stored, whereas amino acids are not stored as protein. Instead, they are oxidized for energy or converted to fat or glycogen for storage. Sorbative and post-sorbative states. Sorbative states last about four hours after eating. Nutrient groups and their destinations. Carbohydrate. Absorbed monosaturides are sent to the liver. Fructose and galactose are converted to glucose. Glucose is released to the blood or converted to glycogen and fat. Triglycerides. Chylomicrons are hydrolyzed to fatty acids and glycerol. They pass through the capillary wall. This is where lipoprotein lipase is found. It is used as source for adipose cells, skeletal and cardiac muscle cells, and liver cells. Amino acids, delivered to the liver, demonate some to keto acid, keto acid flow into Krebs cycle for ATP synthesis or converted to liver fat stores. Hormonal control, insulin essential to all events of the absorbed state. Diabetes mellitus is inadequate insulin production or abnormal insulin receptors. Post-absorbative state fasting, which the primary goal is to maintain blood glucose levels. Sources of blood glucose. Glycogenolysis in the liver. First line of glycogen reserves. It is mobilized quickly. Glycogenolysis in skeletal muscles. Storage about equal to that of the liver. Glucose partially oxidized to pyruvic acids which enter blood and is converted to glucose by the liver. Lipolysis in the liver and adipose tissue. They produce glycerol by lipolysis. The liver converts this to glucose. Catabolism of cellular protein. During fasting, tissue proteins become a major source of blood glucose. Glucose sparing. The increased use of non-carbohydrate fuel molecules during long periods without food. Controls. Hormonal control is glucogen release when blood sugar is low. The neural or sympathetic nervous system, adipose tissue, which is supplied with sym sympathetic fibers and epinephrine, act to stimulate, mobilize fat, and promote glycogenesis. Role of the liver in metabolism. General metabolic functions include metabolize, store, and detoxify. Cholesterol metabolism and regulation of blood cholesterol levels. Cholesterol transports. Triglycerides and cholesterols are bound to small lipid protein complexes called lipoproteins, which vary in composition. High density lipoproteins, or HDLs, are good cholesterol. Low density lipoproteins, or LDLs, are bad cholesterol. And very low density lipoproteins, or VLDLs, are lipid transports to adipose tissue to unload triglycerides and form LDLs. Chylomicrons transport absorbed lipids from the GI tract. Regulation of plasma cholesterol levels. Saturated fats increase production of fat cells. Unsaturated fats increase cholesterol. Next is body energy balance. Regulation of food intake. Nutrient signal related to energy stores. Blood levels of glucose, amino acids, and fatty acids adjust energy intake to output. Rising blood glucose levels. Elevated blood levels of amino acids depress eating. Blood concentration of fatty acids influence hunger. Hormones insulin and CCK are released during food absorption act as signals to depress hunger. Glucogen and epinephrine rise during fasting to stimulate hunger. And your body temperature rises and falls with the BMR rate. Metabolic rate and body heat production. Metabolic rate is the total heat produced by all chemical reactions and mechanical work of the body. Basal metabolic rate or BMR is energy burned while resting. Total metabolic rate, or TMR, is energy needed to fuel all ongoing activities. To measure this, you use a calorie meter or a resp meter. Some factors influenced in BMR and TMR are age, gender, stress, and hormones. Clinical problems, hyperthyroidism is increased BMR, and hypothyroidism is decreased BMR. Core temperature has the highest temperature in organs found in the skull, thoracic, and abdominal cavities. Shell temperature has the lowest temperature, which can be found in the skin. Mechanisms of heat exchange. Radiation, loss of heat in the form of infrared waves. Conduction is transfer of heat from warmer objects to a cooler one. Convection is the process that occurs because warm air expands and rises and cool air falls. Evaporation is insensible water and heat loss. Role of the hypothalamus. 
thermoregulatory centers, heat loss center, which is body temp rises above average, heat promoting center, which is blood temp drops. Afferent input. Peripheral thermoreceptors are found in the skin and central thermoreceptors are located in the body's core. Heat promoting mechanism. Shivering increases the metabolic rate, enhanced release of thyroxin, constriction of cutaneous blood vessels, heat loss mechanisms, dilation of cutaneous blood vessels, enhanced sweating. A fever is controlled hypothermia, most often as a result from infection. Some clinical problems are hypothermia, which can lead to heat stroke.